Jesse Cohen here from Summer School of Chess for another Quick Bites video with you. Today we have uh, this latest upset. Uh, Ding Liren beats Magnus Carlsen at the uh, Opera Euro Rapid. And uh, let's just jump right in and take a look here. So in this game, uh, Ding Liren, um, multiple Chinese champion, one of the top players in the world, and uh, you know one of the players who might be able to take down Magnus someday um, is playing white and of course Magnus playing black let's take a look so d4 knight f6 c4 e6 so it's just like there's many approaches when it comes to deep pawn openings um, this is the uh, Indian approach and the basically the thing is uh, black is going to reserve playing moves like d5 and c5 till later as opposed to the immediate uh, thrust d5 knight f3 a6 kind of a weird little move from Magnus um, he might be intending to play moves like b5. While this might seem strange, uh, trying to find ways to gain space for black and to chip away at white center does make a lot of sense. Knight c3 prevents that. Bishop b4, bishop g5, h6, here, here. And actually, believe it or not, this position hasn't been reached much before. Um, it has and it hasn't. This little a6 move actually kind of makes it in novelty territory, but not by much. Bishop takes c3. Um, interesting choice by Magnus, but a very, very common one. <clears throat> Why is Magnus taking this knight unprovoked? Shouldn't we value bishops a bit more than knights? Typically, yes, I do tend to value bishops a bit more than knights. And typically, I don't want to take this unprovoked. Why are we doing this? Typically in this opening, black has issues when it comes to space. Having advanced pawns, having room for pieces, and so when you find that you're cramped, when you're finding that your pieces are having a tough time moving around, you want to trade off a piece or two so that you have less pieces fighting for an enclosed area, unless you can get some space, of course, okay? Um, so this trade does actually help uh, black have less pieces to maneuver in this position. Um, it also gives some weaknesses to maybe target on. And the reason I think that Magnus is choosing to do it now is if he waits too much longer, white might play moves like uh, queen c2 or rook c1 and then do it and then not actually get the double pawns. Bishop takes c3, b takes c3, d6. Now that we know that our dark square bishop is gone, we're mostly going to fight for the dark squares with our pawns, keeping in mind that our bishop is a light square one. Castle's kingside, knight bd7, knight d2. Kind of a strange move, it might seem, but this move is all too familiar with those who know the same-ish defense. In this position, white has this superior space in the center. What does knight d2 do? Is it not just moving the same piece twice and retreating? It is, but there's some ideas here. For one, we're giving more support to e4. Maybe we can play e4. Maybe we can play f4 and get this really nice big space advantage in the center rolling and then use it as a weapon with e5 f5 ideas coming all sorts of stuff g5 this idea strikes back breaks that pin threatens the bishop and maybe curtails a bit of this idea bishop g3 and now maybe the most surprising move of the opening i thought h5 it's amazing since alpha zero uh the computer that uh uh, Google's deep mind built uh, moving these H pawns has really become a popular thing um, Black's threat is very simple trap the bishop by playing pawn H4 but it seems kind of ridiculous just because black is just not following basic strategy you know instead of fighting for the center we're playing for the wing we're playing for cheap little tricks as, as opposed to dealing with uh, more important things but uh, Magnus has some idea in mind um, he's got that king side attack coming uh, maybe the bishop is going to help out as well. And, you know, Magnus has got to gain some space of his own. White has all this space, and we've got to gain some as well. Pawn to h3. Pawn h4 attacking the bishop. The bishop slides back, and pawn g4. The first sacrifice of the game. Pretty neat. Takes an h3. Now, this is the first critical moment, I think, of the game. Ding has got to respond correctly. In this position, the immediate threat is simple. We're threatening on g2, but how to handle that? I was playing around with this at first because I saw Ding's next move, g3, and I was like, this is horrific looking. Yes, we are stopping the threat, but what just happened to our poor bishop? And this just seems awful. I don't know. It just all looks bad to me. And so I thought to myself, well, what if we tried f3? That 
kind of shuts down the bishop here, but then black takes on g2, and we've gotta be super duper careful here. If we make the automatic recapture and walk into this pin, black plays knight takes g4 with devastating effect, threatening on h2, threatening this fork here. We can't take it. This queen is coming. You know, white is totally, you know, falling apart. And if we don't take it and play something like rook f2, there's still more stunningness. Rook takes h2. King takes h2, knight takes g4, and white has got to take on g2, I think, or play king g3 or something, because if we play pawn takes, there follows queen h4 check, king g1, and queen h1 mate. How crazy would it be to get mated this quickly? So instead, we play g3. And so on one hand, we're up a pawn. On the other hand, that bishop is really having a hard time. Rook g8. Now that we know what we're going after, we're going to start trying to rip things open on this king side. f3, queen e7. Of course, we're in the castle queen side, right? The king side is no place for us. e4. Even though white is on the defensive, just like anything else in chess, remember, the true purpose of chess is to get good things that are different than your opponent and use them. The thing that white has in this position that is better than uh, black is this big pawn mass and the extra pawn and so using it to push forward limit the scope of black's pieces and just creep up and use that advantage makes a lot of sense e4 castles queen side rook f2 kind of just a little prep move it's kind of keeping things a little bit safe dingler and sees that magnus is trying to think of all sorts of ways to rip open this position knight h7 why again Magnus is trying to attack around uh, Ding Liren's king. By playing this move, it opens up maybe knight g5s, but it also opens up possibilities to play f5, e5, d5, c5. Uh, you know, Magnus is looking for any way to try and make the pawns get traded off. Remember, everybody, when you know where you want to attack, you've got to trade pawns in that area of the board or trade pawns in a way that's going to open up the lines, the pathways for your pieces to attack where you want to. A4, we're gonna keep doing it back at black. Shuts it down, rook b1 to the open file, rook e8, knight f1. Kind of just a little simple remaneuvering move. White's gotta be really careful here. Black has all sorts of ideas on how to break through. This knight, you know, like white's trying to play this, like, this balance game between trying to slowly re you know, improve these pieces, but also be aware of how black's gonna attack, uh, try to attack and making sure that those points are gonna be taken care of. Black finally strikes out with E, or sorry, with F5, E takes F5. Now here is the big moment. Here is the moment where Magnus Carlsen makes his first big error. Now again, it's so easy to criticize when we have computers these days and you know we all have our little friend at our, at our fingertips. But the move here that Magnus plays is E takes F5, which makes a lot of sense. You know, he's trying to trade off pawns. This opens up the line for the queen and rook to maybe have some power here. It, you know, but the real move here that's supposed to be played here is uh, e5, which is a total shocker and one that your you know a, most chess players would not typically consider off the bat. And the reason is is that again we want to trade pawns in this area of the chessboard over here so that our pieces have open pathways and we can attack. This avoids the trade at least there, maybe over here, but that's more on the king side where we're trying to attack, right? But just go with me on this. White's best move is d5, and after knight c5, bishop c2, bishop a6, threatening here, knight d2, knight f6, rook e2, e4. You can check this uh, out when you have some free time, but this does work out for black, and black will be able to reorganize the pieces and open up the position this way. And if this is what can happen, then things are certainly looking good. As the F pawn falls, the G pawn's gonna fall. Yes, that queen will get out of the way, and we're gonna have a good day. Instead, Magnus played the move here. E takes F5. Unfortunately, wrong, but very logical. Bishop takes back. Knight G5. C5. Ding Liren messes up back as well. In this position, he's trying to rip open the pawn shield around Magnus's king. This does make sense. What Magnus should play here is d takes c5. Instead, he gets nervous. King b8, mistake. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes back, d5. Now this is a powerful move. This 
shuts down this bishop really, really nicely, which is trying to work with this knight to try and hit us on f3. Notice that black cannot take here. We can simply take back because that knight is absolutely pinned. And if it was the knight had taken it, it'd be the same story for the bishop. So that doesn't work. So this just shuts down the pieces really nicely. Bishop a6, queen, a, uh, queen d4. Now here is where Magnus basically makes his final, final mistake. In this position, um, there's a lot at stake here. Um, Ding Liren is looking to maybe sacrifice the rook for the knight, maybe bring this rook over and then sack, maybe kick this knight out with f4 and start you know, rolling these pawns. I know it's scary because it's in front of white's king, but that's why uh, Ding's been reorganizing these pieces to help out because he wants to push these pawns and use this advantage. They, I mean, they are connected past pawns after all. In this position, what black should play, even though it's a very sad move to have to play, is queen g7. We've got to offer the queen trade. And if we sack, then we can actually come back and block with the queen. That's what we should do. Instead, Magnus plays the move king a7. And I get it. Why? Because typically, you don't want to trade pieces when you're down in material, okay? With every piece that gets traded off, keep in mind, white up two points. It's reducing that ratio. Um, black's running out of options, okay? But this is where the final straw basically just breaks. F4. It might not seem like much to kick this knight, but this knight has nowhere really happy to go. Black doesn't want to trade pieces. These pawns are about to start rolling up the board. You know, black has some serious issues here. Knight e4. Rookie 1. At this point, things are so bad. Black is going to lose a piece. Magnus gets desperate. Knight takes rook. Rook takes. Rook takes. King takes. Check. Important that we go to the right place here. It'd be too easy to go to g1 and let that rook hit us, and it might actually turn out to be very bad. Instead, king f3 is the way. Double the rooks. Now again, mag imagine yourself playing this. Imagine Magnus playing as black and has this position. This looks scary, but looks can be deceiving. In this position, white actually is in not much of any real danger. Ding Liren plays bishop d3. Simple, effective, forcing trades. Take, take, rook g2, and after the simple g5, Magnus decided to throw in the towel. There's just not enough play anymore. The pawns are going to roll. I know that white's pieces look ridiculous, but again, the simple rolling of these pawns is too much for black to handle, and Magnus did throw in the towel. So, yep, Magnus, our champion, has lost, but that's okay because we still have all the faith in the world of him. Uh, amazing job to Ding Liren. These guys just, you know, blow me away with their uh, amazing chess, amazing, amazingness. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, um, I hope that you'll drop a follow, a like, a uh, comment, wherever you're seeing this. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see next. Um, I've got a lot that I want to share with you all, but again, I want to give you what you want. So let me know what you want, and I'll give it to you. Anyway, I'm Jesse, Summer School of Chess. I'll see you next time.